Yeah. yeah. That was good job, buddy. Good job. Good, good job, buddy. Give me a kiss. If you would have done it, Mike would have done it. He is the first. Yeah! First fucking take. I make daddy. How did I meet Matt? I moved to Cunningham in third grade. I think it was 1983. Back then, Matt was this little pudgy, poofy-haired, goofy-looking kid, but... Uh, one of the first things that, that pops into my head is we had this Italian kid in our class named Ricky Barbosa, and my older brother Jeff would pick me up uh, in his car sometimes to take me home, and uh, he picked me up one day, and Matt was having some beef with Ricky Barbosa where they were like duking it out after school, and I remember my uh, my older brother Jeff, you know, stopping the car and either rolling down the window or opening up the door, but yelling. You know, something to the effect of, hey, you little fat shit, <laughs> you know, leave this kid alone. <laughs> and uh, as weird as that sounds, that was how we met. The first time I ever met Matt was when he started working where I worked. The factory. I was kind of training him, and he was just such a nice, outgoing, happy guy. I took an immediate liking to him. We started talking about music, and... We just became really good friends, and he used to ask me all kinds of questions about um, uh, musical equipment because he was trying to start a band. And I remember he had a solid state Randall amp, and I told him to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Randall. Quickly. <laughs> well, first time I ever saw Matt, we went to West, he went to East. We did go on uh, ski trips. And East would always be on the bus first. And I see this guy with a big puff on his head. I'm like, who is this dude? Later, I met him in high school. Pal around with him a lot of uh, JV football. And then uh, I was in auto shop with him. We had some fun times, only four kids in the class, but <laughs> it was always me and him getting in trouble. I met Matt because of my dad. He just started bringing Matt around, our family. Went to his shows, his rock shows for Orange Ruffy. I was very young at the time and obviously thought that, that was just an incredible thing to be a part of. You know, I started playing guitar at a very young age, so I was already playing guitar and going to these rock shows. And um, Matt was just immediately became like a part of our family. I mean, essentially, just. Mm -hmm. You know, you come over to our house and, you know, you teach me riffs on the guitar. Matt and I were in Mr. Brunner's sixth grade class together. And for whatever reason, Mr. Brunner didn't trust us or whatever. And he took our desks and pushed Matt and I's desk together and then pushed them against his desk. And I, and it, I guess he thought that the proximity to his desk would get us to calm down, but it almost made us worse. So Matt and I took it upon ourselves to entertain ourselves because we were a little farther away from the rest of the class. So what Matt and I did is we took our spiral notebooks and ripped out part of the wire and made little basketball hoops. And Matt and I made these little like paper balls for the basketball. And we would shoot hoops during class. Um, I was playing with bands that played with Orange Ruffy. So at some point in time, you know, we our paths crossed on different bills and stuff like that. And the thing that strikes you most about Matt was he was so enthusiastic about rock. That's like music. He just loved music and he was just spilling over with that just Dude, this is great! You know? He couldn't even handle it. He, he couldn't. He was, he was just like, he would just get out of his mind when he would just hear stuff that he liked and... <laughs> Pedal to the metal. Yeah. Pull out, man. You guys were playing and trying to like get shows and you got onto the rock stage the very first time. And I remember you and Matt, or probably you, but then Matt was very encouraging of it. Said, hey, it'd be kind of cool, like maybe we'd get a gorilla. Or like you wanted me to dress yeah, up. Like I so I dressed up as a gorilla, go up on stage, and then with a beer bong. A beer bong. And Matt did a beer bong <laughs> during the set. We did all these dumb things. All this stuff, Matt, like even though he took the music stuff so seriously, he was always like, yeah, let's do this. It's going to be hilarious. And he always wanted us to do these funny things too. So, I mean, I always appreciate I mean, 
I was always a little like questionable about doing it because I was like, are you guys sure you want me to do this? Because I don't care. I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing to lose. They're the ones trying to like get shows and play in other places. And if people get sick of this and they don't want to, but God bless them. That was the big thing about Matt too. Was and you gotta understand, Matt wrote everything except for like some of the orange ruffy stuff where Sam would maybe write some lyrics. Matt would do the music. He'd do the lyrics. Uh, he made it very easy on everybody. So Matt really had the most invested in this, if you think of it that way. And it's like, Matt was my big, biggest enabler, whereas <laughs> I'd come up with these stupid ideas. And he'd be like, yeah, dude. Fucking A, dude. That's hilarious. Let's do it. Okay. You know, Matt was, I don't know, 21, 22 at the time when Orange Ruffy really started playing shows. And I was probably 13 years old. And he just became a huge influence on me and just a, a mentor, really. Just, you know, I, I wanted to be in a rock and roll band because my friend Matt was, and I was significantly younger, but it never seemed like that. You know, it never, he never, never seemed like he was talking to a 13 year old. You know, it was just, I was always accepted in his eyes. He had like no airs about him at all, which was which was what you know made him so endearing. Like you loved him so much because all these people, like talented musicians, you know, legit musicians, would come up there and they'd put all this time and all this effort into this stuff, and we'd come up there and just kind of make a mockery of the whole process. And Matt, who had all this invested, would be like, like I said, the biggest cheerleader. You know, where it's like he just never thought of himself like as, uh, never had an ego. No. Where he, if anyone deserved to have an ego, he did. I had a house on the north side and, you know, we'd come over and he would always have some Mickey's grenades. You know, the little Mickey's bottles. Just ready to fucking rock, man. And... That laugh he always did. Yeah. He, he didn't like being <laughs> upset. You know, that was just his personality. He was, you know, that's why everyone liked him. You know, he was always happy, upbeat. Um, so even when you did tick him off, it was, you know, <laughs> it wasn't so bad. <laughs> Unless you're these idiots. <laughs> Matt always wanted everybody to have fun. And you had to because he was having so much fun. It was so much fun to watch him that you had to have fun. Yeah. yeah. It was just F-U-N. Missing Matt, I mean, there's times, you know, there was always the good times, the party times. There was also the times when I'd just stop over there and we'd just hang out. One of the last times I saw him, he was just getting his snow thrower ready for the next snowfall. And I brought over a six pack of Mickey's and some Grizzly and we were Chewing and uh, drinking. He seemed in good spirits to me. I mean, I didn't know what was going on with him. But. He was one of those friends that you knew was just fucking real. You could depend on him for anything and you could call him any time of day, night, anything, and he'd fucking be there for you, man. I just, what I miss most is him. I caught myself probably, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I can't remember at the moment what the heck it was, but I was driving and it occurred to me and I was laughing. So it was something I thought was funny, but I literally had my phone in my hand. Like, I'm going to text this to Matt. And it's like, those are the moments where you catch yourself and you're like, sucks so there's that you know um, I miss that my kids aren't gonna be able to grow up with them um, I gotta miss that you know we're not gonna be able to follow through a lot of the plans that we had just vacations whatever stupid stuff the thing that I miss most about Matt is that unbridled enthusiasm the way he was just so direct 
and in a way it's kind of you know simple because he was just so focused on that powerful energy you know another thing with Matt all the time with holidays I'd always and even if we didn't talk for a while and we just we go through cycles where we wouldn't talk for like a couple weeks couple months he'd always send me a text hey happy Easter hey happy Thanksgiving hey Merry Christmas brother the very first one that it, I really that I really missed that and I sent him a text knowing that I know he wasn't gonna get it but I sent him one and it was just because it made me not, it made it was easier for me because I wanted to say it one last time because he had always done it for me he'd always sent one to me and I would send him to him it was just that's more because that's more on me because I'm not the one always initiate but he was the one who would always initiate it and I sent him one for once and he never got it if I could say one more thing to him uh, that's another tough thing because for a long time, I would have told him, you know, he was a, an asshole. And I'm just being honest because I was very angry with him, you know, for a while. Because, you know, maybe that's just me being selfish, but I wish he was here and I miss, you know, that he's, that he's not. And, you know, like I said, I think that's just me being selfish. Um, he, he is such a loving guy and he'd be there for someone if, if you needed him. Um, it, it's hard to think of, you know, if I could say one more thing to him because I want to say a hundred. That was the one thing I'll always miss. It's just like those little things here and there that like the, the Merry Christmases and the Happy Easter's and stuff. But that was Matt. He always wanted everybody to be happy. And... That was just his personality, and that's what we'll all miss about him. Can I say come back? <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, I'm, I'm a realist. Just, um, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, I'm just going to miss the guy. That's all I can say. He was great to play with. He was great to take care of you. At the time that we were in Spike Bosford, I mean, he really took care of me. I wasn't in the best place in the world, and he, you know, he would like come out to my place. I lived out in West Dallas, and he would come out. But yeah, love you, Natty. I would just tell him that I love him and that uh, you know I look forward to when we can hang out again you know may not be for a while but I'm confident that you know I'll, I'll see him again and uh, you know we'll laugh and uh, you know things will be right in the world again so. last thing would be thank you and dude Rock on, man.